Hello, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Taala Wabarakatuh and a very good evening to you guys. So, this going to be our first session uh, for lecture uh, ADS 5.0 uh, International Relations and thanks for your uh, attentions and uh, wanted to came here to, to view my, my lecture and this week we're going to start uh, lecture chapter one so last week i already discussed for you, with you uh, we, we we already use uh, online so we got uh, last week i already cover about chapters uh, that i'm going to teach for this masters and then the 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 conduct things how i i might con i will conduct my lecture for this entire semesters so uh, we already agreed that we have two types uh, of, of method. First will be the online, which we're going to use the MS Word, because soft uh, teams, you know, while when, when we're doing uh, online session. And then second, uh, we're going to use uh, offline session. Offline, offline session, uh, we're gonna use uh, this kind of video. I'm gonna record the video, upload in YouTube, and then you you will you will watch it uh, using the you future link. Okay, and this is because you know uh, it's not fair. Uh, last week also when when I'm doing online, some of our friends could could not join because of uh, internet and also connection problem, and I need to consider them also. So, so we we gonna we'll, we we already we we'll, we already reached a decisions that we are gonna use this both method. So, and offline also is very good method because you know all of my video already I will keep it in YouTube. So easiest for you in future if you might do some revisions you might need to uh, check back all the details you can just Google it. Okay so so it's, it's good also okay so uh while not wasting our time so let's start our first uh, lecture for this week okay and one more thing before we start i would like to uh, use uh, i would like to say that uh so i for this masters uh i already give you flexibility in terms of our uh, teaching okay our teaching and learning and hope you fully utilize don't take for granted uh, about my flexibility please join the lecture fill the attendance that's very important okay don't take for granted okay so hope you guys uh, I will try my best to give the best uh, for example, I will, I will, uh, I will settle all the things you know that that be needed, and I will uh, contribute uh, in terms of uh, in terms of lecture and everything. But uh, and and also I need your your help also, okay? Your help, your commitment to view to join the session. That's very important, okay? Although if you have any problem, you can just for example. Yeah, let me know if you have to go to hospital or what, anything. Okay, I'm consider that. Uh, but uh, please, uh, uh, please help yourself. Please help me. You know, we help each other. Okay, so so that's my advice to you. Hope you, I, I hope you get good marks. Okay, I wanted to, all of you to get good marks in uh, the in this uh, in this subject. Okay, and I I would like I would love you for uh, I would love to uh, if you get high marks okay in in the subject okay so uh, hope you uh, you took my advice and then uh, so I I I wish also it is a happy semester to you uh, studying in ADS five one zero. So I will try my best lah to help you. Okay, so let's uh, look at the chapter one slide. Okay, about introductions to international relation.
Okay. Okay, again, of this discussion, uh, we're going to look at the definitions of IR. So you're going to define meaning of IR. So reasons of studying IR, we're going to notify uh, your understanding about studying IR. So we're going to look at definition of the state. What is state is very important in IR. Because if you um, state uh, in IR, is a main actor okay main actor means uh if like movie they are pelakon utama okay main actor okay so that's why very important state are very important in IR. okay and and we're going to touch uh, uh the terms of and also the the feel of state in chapter four while we're doing the state and non-state actor uh because uh, in in movie also we have main actor, support actor, right? So in IR we have main actor which is state, support actor which is other than state. Uh, for example, IGO, international government, international government, uh, governmental organization, NGO, non governmental organization, and then we have MNCs. Uh, this is all considered as non state actor. Okay, and then we're gonna look a bit on historical development. Uh, we're gonna just look at it. Uh, we don't. We don't gonna go deep in terms of the historical development. Just as a phase, uh, study the process of development, and then um, bit tutorial, searching uh, info of global issues. Okay, so before we start, let's look at the video first. Okay, about the international relations. Okay. Hello friends, welcome to School of Political Science. The study of international relations is becoming ever more important as our world becomes more interconnected. In this video, we will learn about the what international relations is. Literally, international relations is a subdiscipline of political science, which studies the relations among nations. The term international was first used by Jeremy Bentham. You can see in this diagram how nations are interrelated to make a relation that means international relations. International relations as a separate academic discipline has emerged in the first quarter of 20th century. The first university chair that formally established the discipline was the Whitney Wilson Chair of the International Politics at the University College of Wales in 1919 meaning of international relations international relations represent the study of foreign affairs and global issues among states intergovernmental organizations non-governmental organizations and multinational corporations etc it is both an academic and public policy field and can be either positive or normative as it seeks both to analyze as well as formulate the foreign policy of particular states according to farmer and parkins International relations is related to not just politics of international community centering on diplomacy and relations among people and the groups in the world society. Morgenthau and others viewed the core of international relations to be international politics and subject matter of international politics to be struggle for power. Bales and Smith refers to world politics rather than international relations or international politics because these are the traditional names used to describe the kind of interactions and processes. Thus, we are interested in relations between institutions or organizations that may not be the state. Lawson's defined international relations denotes interactions between state-based actors across their boundaries. Jackson and Sorensen observed that the main reason why we should study international relations is that fact that the entire populations of the world are divided into separate territorial communities or independent states, which profoundly affected the way of people live. Theories of international relations. The basic problem facing anyone who tries to understand contemporary world politics is that there is so much materials to do and that it is difficult to know which things matter and which do not. For example, how would you explain 9-11 or the 
2003 war in Iraq? Or why did President Barack Obama escalate the war in Afghanistan in 2010? To answer this question, we need theory. With the help of theories, we can explain contemporary world politics. So, a theory is a kind of simplifying device that allows you to decide which facts matter and which do not. There are mainly five theories in international relations liberalism, realism, Marxist theory, social constructivism, and post colonialism. The most prominent exponent of liberalism is Alfred Zimmerman, Norman Angel, James T. Shortwell, and Uto Wilson. And most chief exponent of realism is E.H. Carr and Morgenthau. Emmanuel Wellenstein and Gunter Frank and Ralph are the Marxist theorists and social constructivism theorist is Alexander Wendt. The post colonial thinker or theorist is W.E.B. Du Bois. In future, I will make videos on these theories. Subject matter of international relations. These are the subject matter of international relations. The diplomacy, war, trade relations, alliances, cultural exchange, particip participation in international organizations, conflict and cooperation in relationship among states concerning issues, areas, international security, questions of war and peace, international political economy, equality, justice, and sources of international inequality. Thank you, friends, for watching these videos. For more videos, okay. Uh, so, please, please subscribe to our channel. Okay, so. Okay, so that is about uh, what is international relation. Okay, basic uh, definition, it is about the, the relationship between uh, the relationship between state to state. Okay, so for example, as I said last week, okay, as I said last week, uh, the, for example, human humans also have relationship right and also human uh, classifies their relations what uh, what they're gonna do with the relationship what they would choose to be in relation with with with, with someone that they choose so it's like a state also okay state also will choose what state that they wanted to make friends and then they go, they also have class in terms of the relationship all not you are my friends you are not my friends and you are my friends but which type of friends it's like a human relationship okay for example you you have your close friends right you have your bff friends more closer you have what we call as more closer buddies like families you have that uh, friends with interests friend with benefits right you choose and also your class your 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 relationship so that 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 every each person that you you may see you so they they have uh, they don't have a same criteria within yourself okay and then it, it also reflects in international relations for example state itself you know for example i choose one state which is malaysians you look at malaysians which has border with the thailand indonesia and also singapore they are just they are the closest uh neighbor to us but yet from this three state uh that malaysian uh were the neighbor okay but the, the relation between these three are far different okay for example malaysians might be more closer uh, to singapore rather than indonesia because of firstly history lah, the sense of belonging singapore used to be part of malaysia when we form uh, the, 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 the 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 malaysian itself okay and 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 indonesia were more closer and and were more uh 
our our bilateral lah or ataupun uh, our relationship uh, with, uh, with with Indonesia were more closer than uh, yeah, Thailand because of sense of belonging. Uh, we are uh, in one continent, which is the Malay continent. And then uh, because of the we shares a lot of interest, for example, Islamic State, both of them are Islamic State. So that's why our foreign policy uh, with uh, Indonesia are more, more, uh, more reliable or more, f- more flexible rather than the, the, the Thailand itself. Okay, that shows why state need a relationship, but yet they do classify the relation between uh, the state because of the interest itself. Okay. Okay, understood. Okay, in, in international relation also, we're going to study about the state system. Okay, we also going to study about the global politics. Uh, state system means uh, later uh, uh, we have five uh, state system point and also uh, I also study on global politics, for example, uh, includes uh, other actors, you know, not uh, as I said before, uh, in IR, state is a main actor, but yet other actor also is very important to the international relation because they also give influence to the international relation, for example, the, the international organization. In IO, we have two which is one is international government organization uh, which is igo international government organization and then uh, we have the ngo non-governmental organizations and then we have mnc which is mnc the multinational co- corporate or companies that operate throughout the world because they also influence in decision making the state and then others others for example terrorists Okay, they are considered as the uh, non-selector. They also influence in the international relation in terms of rules and also bilateral and multilateral. If you're going to look uh, how strong or how weak the relation between state to state or state to other organization, you, you might look it uh, in the terms of the foreign policy. Okay, in IR, foreign policy is like a love letter, a surat cinta, for example. Okay, for example, if a man want to uh, want to show his uh, uh, his his uh, what impress or express, okay, uh, for the woman, so they might write uh, a love letter, right? But yet in IR, so if the state wanted to show some things or need to uh, what to deal with the state, uh, the main will be the foreign policy. Lah. So that's why our foreign policy is different between state. Okay, for example, our policy with Western are more not to not to hard rather than our foreign policy be with Israel we are we 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 already declare that we could not gonna make any attach with Israel and then our policy in Middle East will be more not more will be more comprehensive rather than our policy in in African continent right so so it reflects okay the foreign policy of the state reflects their decision and also their interest uh, within the state. Okay, and then are we going to see the social relationship between uh, you know, political groups of human beings, you know? For example, we have ethnic, you know, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, social problems or relations that happens, okay? And then, uh, involvement okay certain advantage and also disadvantage for the participant is it weak is it strong okay and also we we, we also include our particip- participation in international agenda for example uh, in terms of we also part of international organization although we are state we are members of international organization for example united nations asean if you look at malaysian right so they also play a big role 
in shaping the the international relations okay okay why is that dir okay uh, i have a video okay so we're going to look at the video first then later i will explain about about the video itself <laughs> This is an introduction to international relations, also known as IR. Often we ask the question, what is international relations? A simple definition is it's a being the study of relationships between countries, including the roles of states, intergovernmental organizations, international non-governmental organizations, or INGOs, non-governmental organizations, and multinational corporations. International relations draws upon many diverse fields, primarily economics. In other words, how the world deals with money and the haves and have nots, deals with history. Why did we go to war here and there? Who caused what wars? Sociology, how people interact, and politics and a lot, both domestically and internationally. So what are some of the issues that we study in international relations? One would be nationalism. Obviously the pride in one's nation. Many think of German nationals or Italian nationals, how the USA feels during Olympic years, as, as we would discuss, or the independence of different states, the sovereignty that is, and the international security, how occasionally a nation such as we see in Nazi Germany, how it got so large that the rest of the world basically ganged up on it, or on Iraq. And we also have to worry about the non-state actors in all three of these. What are some of the issues studied in international relations? Well, we look at globalization. In other words, how we've gone from our own little sector of the world to becoming part of a greater globalized world. Think about economics, how we rely on each other in interdependence. Also, terrorism. Terrorism has become so uh, widespread, not just in smaller areas of the world, it's become redefined. We look at economic development. How can our country help another country with their uh, economic development and us benefit as well in international finance? Keep in mind the dollar is valued on both the yen, the euro, and several other international currencies, and its strength or weaknesses are based upon this. One asks themselves, when did international relations begin? When did the study begin? We can really trace it back all the way through history, but for the most part, in the modern world, we're going to look at the Peace of Westphalia, which ended the Thirty Years' War in 1648, where modern state system was developed. Prior to this, European me medieval organization of political authority was based on a real vague hierarchical religious order, as well as with royalty and kings. Westphalia instituted the concept of sovereignty, which meant that rulers or legitimate sovereigns had no internal equals within a defined territory and no external superiors as the ultimate authority within that territory's sovereign borders. Thus, the Peace of Westphalia ended that 30 years war, which was basically a religious war between Protestants and Catholics in Germany in the small German states. A simple way to view this is that sovereignty says, I'm not allowed to tell you what to do, and you're not allowed to tell me what to do. Ancient civilizations sometimes resembled the Westphalian system, but both lack the notion of sovereignty. Peace of Westphalia also includes the rights of independent nation states, the institution of diplomacy and armies. This particular European system was exported to the Americas, Africa, and Asia via colonialism from Europe and the standards of civilization. The contemporary international system was finally established through decolonization during the Cold War. However, this is somewhat oversimplified. While the nation state system is considered modern, many states have not incorporated the system and are thus termed pre modern. Further, a handful of states have moved beyond the nation state system and can be considered postmodern. The ability to, of contemporary international relations discourse to explain the relations of these different states is disputed. Levels of analysis is a way of looking at the international system, which includes the individual level, the domestic nation state as a unit, the international level of transnational and intergovernmental affairs, and the global view. We try to explain the actions of groups, the why. Okay.
Okay, so why? Uh, why we study IR? Okay, so a lot of things so that, that, that happen in the world. For example, uh, war, okay, the, uh, the chaos, okay. Uh, why? Why uh, conflict always happen in Middle East? Why? Why uh, currently now terrorism are more danger than 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 military uh, interventions by the state? You know, so so a lot of things that we need to know. Okay, why why Britain uh, left the EU European Union? Right, while EU is far more established, you know, in terms of the organizations in economy itself, you know, a lot of you know benefits that Britain can get from EU. So why is it? Why uh, ASEAN is a main uh, uh, regionalism? Okay, in 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 South Asia, you know, so a lot of things, you know. So why need we need to study IR because of this kind of things? You know, we need to know. The, we need to do, you know, we need to leave, you know, war is not uh, a necessary anymore, right? Once the Cold War ended, so we, we, the world are too tired to face war, okay? And maybe the last war will be the last life for us and also for the humankind, you know, because maybe in the last war, maybe World War Three will be the nuclear war, right, that can explode the world. So, uh, so by in prohibiting the war, okay. So that's why the relations of international relations are very important. Okay. So, uh, other than that, we're gonna discover the fact that the entire population of the world living independent state in the, interdependently. So we're gonna also learn how international relations operate and affect government, for example, in terms of business enterprise, people in general. We're going to uh, identify also how international relations affect the international community, then uh, to distinguish and also evaluate the roles of the various actors in IR. And then we're going to also look at the Malaysian foreign policy on the past, post, current, and also future that reflects our conditions as a legitimate state and also relevance okay in international affairs okay so this is world map okay uh, we not live alone okay we not for example Malaysia not live alone in the world so okay, we have lot okay more than 200 uh, state that are located in the world you know by divided by the continent you know we have uh, the Southeast Asian continent region we have the uh, Middle East region the Africans okay and we're divided by the continent okay so we have nine region in the world okay uh, so this uh, that separate uh, the 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 world for example we have the Southeast Asia and the ASEAN Pacific including Australia and uh, we have America Latin then we have North America and the Caribbean and we have Europe uh, include the uh, Russia and then we have Northeast Asia uh, include Japan and also China and then we have South Asia Okay, it'll include India and all the Pakistan, the their traditional uh, enemy. Then we have Middle East, uh, North Africa. Uh, we have Central Africa, and the last will be the Southern Africa. Okay, so it actually uh, reflects. Okay, so each region. Uh, reflects the 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 living okay in in the in the international system so that's why the relations uh, is very important because we are not live alone in the world so we have more than 200 states then uh, we need to make relationship to lesser the tension to 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 lesser the enemy okay we have to make friends 
Okay, let's look at the state itself. Okay, what is the definition of the state? Why state are important to international system? Why state are important to international relation? Okay, so state have poor uh, definition. Uh, so to become a state, you must have, first it will be the government. Uh, you must have a legitimate government that, that were, for example, we have state that uh, being ruled by the president, being ruled by the prime minister, being ruled by the king, monarch king. So we, we have, okay, that's considered as legitimate state, okay. And then second, uh, it must be tangible. Tangible means they must have territory, okay. If the the place that the, the state don't have territories, is we, we are not considered them as a state. Okay, they must have territorial, okay. For example, animal also have their own territorial. That's why state also have, must have territorial. Okay, and then the third, if you have government, if you have territorial, you, you must have population. Okay, so state must have populations. Okay, so that's why they operate the rules on them by the uh, governments, they, they organize rules, they created uh, all of the do and don'ts, you know, there are a lot of things that happen. And then the last one, uh, state must have what we call as sovereignty. Why sovereignty? sovereignty is very important, okay, to the state. If you have government, if you have territorial, and also you have population, you don't have sovereignty, it means you are not a legitimate, a legitimate state, okay? For example, like Israel. Israel are not considered as legitimate state because uh, you don't, they don't have uh, sovereignty. Sovereignty means uh, other state recognize you as a legitimate state. And negara yang sah keabsahan or negara yang bebas daripada mereka. Huh? The absolute, okay, the keabsahan Malay, we call it. And that's why, for example, uh, they, they, from 1948 until now, they, they still struggle to get their sovereignty from the Palestine. Okay, that's why in Malaysia, we don't recognize them as a sovereign state and we declare them as a regime state. Uh, okay, negara yang tak ada sovereignty ni, kita panggil regime. Okay, sebab so, we don't uh, we don't recognize them as a legal state. Okay. Okay, uh, in IR, a lot of views, okay, uh, that... that scholars if you look at the, the internet you know a lot of difference we have, we have traditional views and then we have alternative views okay most traditional views says that uh state are uh, valuable institution yeah state is very prominent in ir so they provide security freedom or the justice and also welfare okay basic principle of the state system and then uh, traditional view also says that people benefit from the state system. Uh, people that benefit from the state system. If let's say state don't go for war, the people will get benefit. If let's say state going for war, people will, will get the chaos. Okay. And then core institutions of IR. Okay. State are core institutions of IR. Okay. So uh, tradition will look at state first rather than look at others. For example. Okay, but uh, in terms of alternative views, they, they they look at others also. For example, they say that a state uh, and also state system create more problems that they solve it. Uh, so whatever problem that we are having now, for example, war, conflict, you know, chaos, the main person who credit is the state. Okay. And then the majority of the world, people suffer more than they benefit from the state system. Uh, they say that because of the state, because of the war, people are more suffered. You know? Until now, still conflict it still occurs. Although we already declared that the last war is the Cold War. Right. Until now, we still have problem in Middle East, the African, you know, the rebels, the, the what we call it, uh, the guerrilla war, you know, uh, still still occurs, uh, still happen. Nowadays, people killing uh, still occurs. So that's why uh, the alternative view happens, okay? 
It is a set. Sorry, it is. It is a setup for the elite. They say that state are set up for elite, rich, and majority. So they are marginalization against the poor women and also minorities. Okay, so we have two different views. The traditional view always look at the state. The state is powerful. They are core. And then the alternative view says that a lot of things happen in the world because of the state, and the state create war and make problems to the people, and then uh, state being controlled by the elites. Okay, so there are two different views. Okay, we look at the uh, stateless. Okay, uh, so now we look at the state. Now we look at the stateless. Okay, so why do we need state? Okay, so state system uh, in a historical uh, institutions, it is a state centric approach. It remains as a central institution of the world politic. It's a main lah. Okay, state and state system uphold five fundamental values. Eh? Five, but uh, uh, some say five, some say four, but uh, but it has five. Okay, uh, but all the justice we com combine together. That's why uh, it became four. Okay, the first is pol uh, security. Okay, state must have security lah. Power politics you must have become good. Uh, in terms of power, you must have power. If you have power, you can win the war. Okay, so conflict freedom, you must be freedom lah, in terms of cooperation, peace, progress, okay, independence. Okay, and then uh, all the justice, uh, you must have interest rules. You have your undang undang, okay, institutions, and then welfare, take care of the people. Uh, you know, or eradicate poverty and also equality to the to the people. Okay, so we look at it. Okay, the first will be the security. Okay, national security when they are aggressive state. Okay, some state uh, enter alliance. Okay, for example, militias. Militias, we are not closer. We are not superpower. So we ally. Uh, we have what we call as FPDA, Five Power Defense Agreement. Okay, so that that is uh, our ally for the security. For example, also we are a member of UN. Okay, that also will help to take care of our national security. Then, uh, security approach is one of the fundamental values in IR. Uh, this is really theory. Lah. Uh, later, we're going to touch on the chapter of theory. I will explain about it. Okay, second uh, is freedom. So, state is expected to uphold freedom, personal and also national. Independent, we call it. The citizen cannot be free unless the country is free. For example, Palestine, okay? Malaya before Merdeka. So, war threaten the freedoms and also peace foster freedom okay war is very uh, it's not for modern ir uh, war is uh, is a last resort but for the traditional ir state tend to go for war to get power okay peace also lead to progressive development uh, this is liberalist theory okay perspective liberalism perfect liberalism perspective okay they always talk, uh, they always say that uh, peace are important you know uh, when we get peace, there's no war, people will live happily ever after. So this is what we call the perspective of liberalism. Okay, state should cooperate with each other to maintain a peace and freedom to pursue progressive change. Okay, this is freedom. Eh? The third and fourth will be the order and justice. Okay, state have common interest in establish maintain national order. To coexist, interact for stability, uh, certainty, and also predictability. Okay, so it also expected to uphold international law. So state need to appreciate uh, international law, although international law being built by the organization, right? So so some state they don't recognize international law because they feel that uh, state. For, this is uh, the realist perspective lah. Uh, orang orang realism, uh, realist perspective. They feel that international law is not a legitimate law because the uh, international being created by the organization, okay, which is United Nations. They are not uh, legitimate because most realist perspective, they always says that states are the main actor. Uh, they are not the support actor. I O is a non-state actor. Uh, so that's why they, they don't trust the 
Let's law. For example, like Iran, you know, like North Korea, Israel, like Russia. Yeah? So, so they some of international uh, rules they will just obey or they just uh, hit or crash the the rules and regulation. And then United Nation cannot do anything because they are superpower. Okay. Also expected to follow acceptance uh, practice of diplomacy and support internal. Uh, international organization, for example, human rights framework. So approach of international society theory of IR, state are socially responsible actor and have common interest in preserving international order and promoting justice. Okay. Justice means you have law, uh, rules, law. You must obey the rules and law. Okay. The last would be the welfare. Okay. Well and welfare. So people expect their government to adopt appropriate policy to encourage high employment, low inflation, steady steady investment and others. So state need to respond to international economic environment to enhance or maintain national standard of living. Okay, and then uh, international political uh, international political economy approach. Okay, for example, uh, not South gap, you know, uh, the, the dependency theory, and the the high income state need to help the low income state in terms of buy national resources. The low income state uh, will depend on the high income state in terms of end product. Okay, so itu itu yang kita panggil IP approach lah. Okay, so so before we end of the session, let's look a bit in terms of historical development. Okay, I'm gonna look at the. Uh, the Western history we have, if you look at uh, the history itself, okay, city state and also empire. So, a lot of uh, Western and also historical empire that they already create and also uh, put the, the, the history, for example, the starting from the Greek cities, okay, that they create states and then. Uh, after that uh, came the Roman Empire, okay, the rule of the world, and then create the history, and then uh, after that came the medieval Christian Empire, okay, the, the Black Ages, the Dark Ages, all. And then if you look at the historical empire in the Middle East, uh, we have Muslim Empire, and also the Uthman Emperor, the, 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 the last emperor, the last uh, empire, okay, that, that that have been demolished by the Christian, and then uh, in terms of Chinese, uh, we have the lot of dynasty Ming, Han, Khan, and then India. So they all actually shaping what the world are today. Okay, start from the territorial, they create their own boundaries, they create their own territorial. They actually create until now what state are kept for today. Okay, so historical end point of medieval era and starting modern international system, it is uh, when uh, the world having uh, 30 days of 30 years of war, starting from 1618 to 1648. Okay, the 30 years of war being ended by the majors of power signed the Peace of Mesphalia on 1648. It is a major breakthrough to the international relation that. Uh, this is considered as the main, the first relationship between the state, lah, the state of West Power, West Palia. So after that, several major attempts by the different power to impose the political hegemony. Okay, and then after 30 years uh, war, uh, were blocked by the coalition led by the France and also Sweden. And then France made a attempt uh, under King Louis. It was blocked. This is under Napoleon. Yeah? Okay, was blocked by the English Dutch uh, Alliance and then Napoleon again. Uh, 1975 until 1885, 1815 made the attempt and been blocked by the, the Britain, Russia, Prussia, and also Australia. And then post Napoleonic balance of power among the great power. So the, it actually, uh, uh, the concerts of Europe. Uh, that lead to the First World War, okay, starting 1815 until uh, 100 years, uh, 1914. 
and then while having war okay german made her uh, world war one and then uh, and then uh 1919 we got uh, the war ended and then second world war uh, started by hitler 1939 and then be end by the us and the, the the bomb of hiroshima and nagasaki and then for the 30 350 years old, uh, the european state system managed to resist the main political tendency the strong to control conquer the weaker powers okay now the sole remaining power after cold war is us okay after 40, 1945 then 1946 start cold war between us and russia and then 1990s when the when the German Berlin Wall collapsed, so it, it's, it shows the end of Soviet Union um, Empire and US become dominant, ataupun kita panggil hegemony. Uh, maksud dominant dengan hegemony ni ataupun uh, unilateral adalah maksudnya kuasa tunggal dunia, kuasa besar. Okay, dia seorang-seorang je yang Paul. Okay, Western state not be able to dominate each other and third uh, competition to penetrate and control other part of the world so huge non-european territories fell under the control of european state okay these are the global expansion of state system uh, think lah, from 19 from 16 kita adopt european system and then uh 17 we adapt adopt uh, western system and then 80s, um, more more state become uh, independent and then we adopt the globalization globalizing system and then the last will be the global system. Lah. Okay, until now. Okay, this is reference. Okay, reference, we're going to use the uh, Goldstein. Our, our main book reference will be the Goldstein. Lah. Okay, I already give to you Joshua and Goldstein. Okay, uh, the, the new the new edition. So please look at it. We'll use it as a main reference, and then the the lot of reference you can use John Bailey's, uh, Mutia, Copy, Jackson. All lah, you can use no problem. But our main reference will be the Joshua. Lah. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, okay, this is the video uh, this is uh, some things that you need to know okay uh, 10 top global problems in the world today okay so let's look at it Hello everyone, Global Economic Forum surveys which got conducted in 2017, it was published in the February 2018. Here the voice of millennials was considered for knowing their opinions and views on current state of the world. Looking at the details closely of the whole process, the survey showed that millennials are conscious of the current happenings. They are responsible and have their own say on the global issues, breaking the stereotypes of millennials being selfish and careless, and concern for nature as their focus above all issues. Now, here are the top 10 concerns in the current time according to millennials. Economics always plays a big role in any stage of life, and here it's at number 10. Safety and security is one of the major priorities. Here it is counted 14.1%, the ninth. <laughs> 
education is always seen as a concern for lack of growth, and here it is counted as the eighth. Many areas, especially the developing world, faces food and water concerns. Here it is seventh. Government and corruption can have a massive impact on development. It's placed at sixth. Based on religion, there are many disputes and conflicts exists even today. Here it's fifth. Whenever we talk poor growth and lack of development, poverty is always one of issues. And here it features in the fourth position as the most challenging problem. Third in the report is the factor of inequality on social fronts and income levels. Often, it is seen in the developing areas where income levels difference is significant. We can hear about some countries' growth is hampered by terror and wars, and the impression of destruction it leaves behind remains there for a long time. This might be the very reason which has managed to put it in the second position. The most significant threat, observed by the millennials according to the survey, is the destruction of nature and its rapidly deteriorating state, counting for about 48.8% people, voting it as the biggest concern of our present time. Now if we see this report, it is quite clear that protection of nature and reducing the high levels of destruction which we are causing to it is our number one priority and we all must show our support. I would like to say thank you for watching this video. Have a wonderful day and peace for everyone. Okay, so something to you to to what to think of it about what currently happened in the world, what things are very important to this, and then uh, so that's all for my chapter. Okay, chapter one for this uh, this week. So next week we're gonna touch on chapter two, which is we have two slides on chapter two. Uh, from my history, uh, World War until the Cold War, and then uh, hope uh, you guys still uh, gonna meet you on you guys on next week. Okay, so until then, uh, so thanks for your time today. Okay, ah, itu saja lah daripada saya. Hopefully. Uh, kita jumpa lagi lah ok minggu depan Assalamualaikum and have a nice day